today? What day is it today? Wednesday. 10th of July, right? 10th of July. Okay. All right. So we're at the end of the book of Revelation. It finished on July the 8th. Right. Once we crossed over into Lunation 11.20, which right. we are in now. Okay. Now I'm going to be reading from a different screen. So this camera is just capturing me doing some reading and you'll have the benefit of... What a good idea. Sometimes I scare myself. Oh, there you go. Okay. So we're <laughs> on over here now. I mean, totally, but anyway. All right, so what you'll be seeing in the uh, screen capture is uh, what we've been working on this morning. And I'll go as far as I feel like I want to go right now, which is not all the Just way. Just do a quick comparison. <laughs> what? Oh, I, I know. It's <laughs> awesome. Now, what we're looking at right now on the screen, which you will be able to see by the time Joel actually ups, uploads this, is a statue. Statue? Is statue? Statues. Statues. I think it is. Yeah. Um, the dedication within the Vatican Gardens on Friday. Uh, I've already done the upload, having a great old go at uh, the Antichrist there. And um, doing a close-up on the actual statue, which is the Archangel Michael. And it was work that was uh, started by Benedict. And that's why Francis invited him to the dedication of it. We've uh, done a bit of an analysis of that Rome Report video. <laughs> it's very amusing. But a close-up of the statue itself. Man, was that um, sculptor... You do see in the video was he inspired uh, I've got it on the screen here and focusing on the face of the statue um, just just <laughs> that's it now hello <laughs> um, does that remind you of somebody 33 years ago Hmm. It's, uh, yes, you can all write in and tell us who it reminds you of. <laughs> but I pointed it out to Yara, I said, God, that's you, hon. <laughs> that is absolutely Just give you. the game away. There's well, going to be a competition to see if you get it right. Yeah, well, the two or three can write in. <laughs> all right, that's fine, moving right along. With this screen, I'm only going to mouse for that. No, it's okay. <laughs> well, how did it get that far? Well, it's supposed to go, yeah. You go back up. It's supposed to be using it like this. Very professional. <laughs> now, you go down to this little thing down here. Yeah. All right. Okay. No, and you one. did the same thing. Well, uh, shall we start? I'm this getting off? old, you know. Shall we? Shall we start this again? No, this is good. Oh, where the hell's it gone? Well, it's disappeared altogether now. You're right at the end of. <laughs> what the world. Needs now. There's a mouse, as I said. <laughs> All right, we'll go and get the mouse from the, the other place. Yeah, we'll we want the little from. arrow thing down the bottom. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I do know how to operate it. It's just All right, go you know, ahead. usually when you do a page down, it just goes to the next page, not 10,000 later. All right, moving on to the next page. Here we are. Hello. <laughs> I laughed as uh, Francis is saying. Um, we all know the devil is defeated. Well, we do. That's that's why. Actually, you said with Michael there, he's got his foot on something. You said it looks like Francis. <laughs> all right. So we're just uh, taking screenshots from the RomeReports.com. And here's a, a gnarly little group of, uh, don't they look attractive? These archbishops there and cardinals. Satanic and, 
homosexual children. Uh, yeah, look at the dude in the front. And then, of course, sitting right behind him is George Gensway, the man who knows everything that's going on and concealing the return of the Christ. So he's being held as the one most accountable right now. <sighs> and there it is. Statue of Michael. And here they are, there's Benedict sitting in the chair there listening to the Antichrist who has suppressed the announcement and I'll read to you. All right, here we go. Now's a good time to read the uh, communications. Remember in one of these uploads I said that the uh, thugs working for France has got a little cocky. Well, I thought I'd read to you. Isn't it, this is coming from Pope Benedict's computer. No. Oh. This is after the night they shut him down, took over his computer, and uh, cut off all communication. But that's using his email, isn't it? No, not this time. This is oh. the week after. This is this is later, after the fact. After the night of the crucifixion, mm -hmm. where all communication is cut off, and it was reported that Benedict was knocked to the floor and left with a bleeding ear. Now. So this, okay, so this now is the detective. This is Marshall, question mark. I'm Detective John Eleonora. I work for Pope Francis. So he's the dude that sent the emails from Pope Benedict's com computer when they shut him, cut, cut off all communication and took away Father Giuseppe. Uh, and, and so this is 10 days, seven days later when Giuseppe, was supposed to have been Giuseppe that got through to us to communicate from the place he'd been taken to, into exile. Now, there's a whole lot of unknowns about that. It could very well have been the right. policemen who were, who, were, who were taking, wasn't Giuseppe. Who, who were playing around. Okay, so now this Giuseppe will have no further communication with you, but I go, okay. And then he comes back, and you'd better stop tweeting the Pope Francis, and I say, no way. And then he says, you think he is stupid? I said, why are you working for the devil? Now, listen to this. Have a look at the photograph there and then, um, you know, the closeness between Francis and Benedict that uh, Francis was trying to make out. Wait and see what he has planned up his sleeve. So these are the thugs who have already kidnapped Giuseppe and Sister Morella Della Rosa. Getting cocky now and saying, wait, and see what he has planned up his sleeves. I say he will kill you at any moment if you step out of line. He says, Ciao, Puthanella, which apparently means bitch. Um, I say, wait until you see what Jesus has up his sleeves. <laughs> that statue. <with> that. <laughs> he says, Your husband isn't Jesus, you know it. I respond, You idiot, you know he is. Otherwise, Francis would not bother. And then listen to what this thug working for Francis says. Francis doesn't care. He is just concerned that a great theologian is crazy enough that he believes your husband is Christ. We are the ones who are doing this. And I say, you'll go to the bottom of this pit along with the Antichrist, Francis. Then he says, that theologian is Benedict. So here's the detectives telling what Francis really thinks about Benedict. Hello. I say all prophecy, all is prophecy. We are in Revelation 11, 17 at that time. You cannot escape death. And then he says in capital letters, he isn't the Antichrist, exclamation mark, eight of them. He said he doesn't give a shit. It's probably us that are the antichrists. I say anyone who denies the Christ has come in the flesh now, this time, is antichrist and will die. And then it's then uh, it says you cannot reply to this conversation, either the recipient's account. That's when they again disabled the account. However, you you can see here that he's saying, he's bragging 
about what uh, Francis would have up his sleeves. Wait and see what he has planned up his sleeves. So was that the uh, supposed murder of Giuseppe, whom you can't kill anyway, but he can contain him somewhere? So the events that played out shortly after this with the, uh, the uh, email that we got announcing Giuseppe dead, being shot eight times, three times in the head, twice in the chest and then another three times in the rib and then the um, funeral card that was already sent to his email, etc, etc, etc. Is that what Francis had planned up his sleeves? Or did he have planned up his sleeves an announcement that Benedict was dead? Because at the time that this was all happening, you had that uh, fat Spanish reporter woman writing a book. It's all out in the uh, souvenir shops uh, about uh, Francis's rise to the uh, papal office, etc., etc. And she was the one saying that we won't have uh, Pope Benedict for very long, yada, 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 speculating on his demise and his death. Well, Expect they can't funeral. expect a few expect they were planting the seed to expect a funeral so here we have been it's good to see him sitting there very spry and their first appearance together since when since march no march the 23rd when they met at castel gandolfo the historic meeting and that's where benedict told francis that the christ is returned and asked him to make the announcement to which this oh so humble Francis refused, rejected outright and actually said after the presentation of Vatican III, which solves all of the problems for the church and the world, lifts everybody out of poverty and misery and heals every soul within every nation to live under the conditions of paradise with the Christ on his throne rather than devil that's been ruling for the last 6,000 years. So what did Francis say? Oh, so humble. What a man of humility, he says. What does he say? Well, let's, let's get, um, can you get uh, that folder over there, please, hon? I'll read, I'll read his response. We may never get to where we're going today in this because, no, I'm not. <laughs> well, you keep talking about it. What? No, 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 I'm, I'm, we're going to get there because, uh, um, <laughs> actually, hon, I think it's on the dresser over there, underneath that box. Apostolic letter in English. Mm. Thank you. Oh, here it is, yeah. In Christian Credent. And what was Francis's also oh humble response as he had just been told that Christ is back? Given the evidence, including a video from us. Doing this again. That was Benedict's. Uh, this is the man that um, Francis reveres. Here it is. The meeting with both Pope Francis and Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI regarding Mr. Brian Marshall's claim to be the Christ. On Saturday, the 23rd, 2013, Pope Francis, my successor, had made a historic visit to see me at Castel Gandolfo. We embrace each other. That's the arm on the, uh, that's the natural body language of both of them. Pray together. But when speaking about Mr. Brian Marshall, that part was done privately for only 45 minutes. The Holy Father, Pope Francis, has given me the permission to write this down on this apostolic letter. I informed him about Mr. Marshall that I believed he is the reincarnated Christ. And then I asked him after presenting the evidence and some of the video the marshals have prepared for us, and he replied to it by saying this, Christ has not come yet, and this 
man is surely not he. I refuse to make any sort of announcement about him. I am truly sorry, Holy Father. Then uh, Benedict, was, well, if you don't want to believe that is okay, for his love endures forever. However, I shall still believe that he is who he says he is. I hope also that you may believe as well. Thank you for visiting me. You're welcome, Holy Father. May God bless you always. Our private conversation ended there. I'm sorry, Mr. Marshall, for having failed you. And then the Roman Pontiff, Pope Francis, response to Vatican III and to Mr. Brian Marshall's claim. Now, yes, Pope Francis did reject the fact that Mr. Brian Marshall is the Christ, but he also rejected the Third Vatican Ecumenical Council. He said, how's this for humility? I refuse to follow what Brian Marshall says. How dare he write such a thing like Vatican III? Who is he to do that? And again, Benedict says, again, I apologise to Mr. Marshall, but please don't condemn him because he is too overwhelmed and we're still getting used to being the leader of the Roman Catholic Church. Please forgive him. I had asked him also to make an announcement saying that Mr. Brian Marshall is reincarnated Lord Jesus Christ and the second coming has most definitely already occurred. He said no to that as well. So that is the humility of Francis. And of course it remained that way because we waited a few days and on the third occasion it was when uh, it was Arch Archbishop George who said emphatically that sadly he refuses to accept it. Well, as you know, it is only the pure in heart who see God and Francis cannot see God because he is not pure in heart. Whereas Pope Benedict and Giuseppe, definitely the pure in heart as Sister Maria Della Rosa. Now, here we go. I'm showing some more photographs taken, some stills taken from the Rome Report video. That's Benedict raising his hand, response to the applause by all of the others who are applauding his, um, what Francis said about his part regarding the statue, they were thanking him, etc. Now this I thought very interesting at the beginning of the video as um, there is George Gaines Swain bending down to kiss the hand of uh, the Antichrist and Francis looking away immediately. If you watch the video before and after you see everybody else he embraces and he looks at, looks at them while they are still holding hands or whatever. Uh, but Gan Swain takes his hand and he immediately looks away to somebody else and then pulls his hand away and moves on. To, he actually turns away from him. You can read the body language, turns away from him. And here's uh, the bit where he grabs a hold of um, Benedict. And Benedict doesn't, you can see the lips are uh, not moving. Benedict doesn't say anything. <laughs> I analyze this. And then... Uh, uh, the Rome report says that he wished him ahead of time a good trip to Rio, which was still 18 days away. Now, these, these guys live side by side. What I think is really amusing is that the Antichrist is staying in uh, the guest house that is called St. Martha. <laughs> Not too far from the monastery that was uh, uh, restored for Benedict to go back to. And they moved him over there quick smart once they found out that we were actually in the Castel Gandolfo area. So this is the first public meeting. Couldn't really get out of it. Since we showed up and was waiting in the offices. Oh, yes, actually. Yeah, there. yeah, yeah. As uh, it was we're going to get arrested. 5.15, we were at the, the gate of the Vatican waiting in the office. And uh, when the um, helicopter bringing... <laughs> Benedict from Castel Gandolfo back to the Vatican um, was landing and that's why George Gansweyn could not see us at that time. They told us he was busy, make an appointment, gave us the telephone number to do all that, took our um, photocopies of our passports etc and then uh, they'd already been in touch with uh, dudes from upstairs and as we were leaving a phone call came from downstairs and it was, un momento, uh, can we see your passports, please? 
took all of our details and I gave them our address, telephone number, everything. And, um, and uh, yes, because we were told by this detective that uh, we would be arrested if we go to Rome. So, of course, we've been to the Vatican several times now and it's been all very amusing. So, oh, yes, I've got, um, <laughs> we, we've got the uh, capture of the two where uh, they are holding hands first and uh, uh, we've, we've got in there a little uh, bubble, thought bubble coming from Benedict before he says have a good trip to Rio. Now uh, what is, oh think about this, Rio is at least 18 days away for uh, Francis, okay? And these two live side by side, you know, within shouting distance of each other, supposedly that's the report from the, uh, and so Benedict's being allowed out or invited to this unveiling. Uh, only because he was the one that uh, Yeah, that's right, uh, exactly, only because he was the, the, the one that started the project. And so in this seeming show of unity, they've got him parked there beside the Antichrist on the same piece of carpet sitting in a, in a chair. And then, um, so Benedict uh, says to him, and you can see quite plainly, he doesn't say anything else. Not like having a chatty conversation. So his lips don't move. And they report, he says, uh, uh, ahead of time, have a good trip to Rio. Well, uh, we've done a little bit of um, playing around. The thought bubble. Hey, asshole, where is my friend, Father Giuseppe Cervello? You had your thugs kidnapped. And where is Sister Maria Della Rosa? So we can end it there and then you can start to well, no, I'll go on. Um, no, no, I, I won't because, I, I, yes, I'm going to finish it where the book starts, okay? All right, so we'll, let's uh, just get through this bit. Now, of course, mention the name Hitler and the dogs of hell will howl. But his warnings concerning communism, which is false Judaism, fake Judah, was a condemnation of a Satan, Lucifer, demonic-driven force that would take over the world. Now... I've said this before, Hitler in Mein Kampf identified Marxism and Judaism as the two greatest perils for the continued existence of all humankind. He was right, but he was wrong. He was right in that he identified Judaism, but he was wrong in that he said two greatest perils because there is only one, and that is it is Judaism because Marxism, communism is Judaism. Lenin, Stalin, they are all Jews. It was a condemnation of Satan, Lucifer, demonic force that would take over the world, introduce all forms of perversions in defiance of the teachings of Jesus. This was what it all boils down to. So, you know, this is Hitler. Does that sound like an evil man? Stalin under communism killed at least 60 million Russian Christians. Yet not one word can be found. And, and was Stalin a Christian? Hello? No. It's the same as Lenin. The Jews call themselves Jews and are not. So what force killed the Romanov royalty of Russia? They were Christian. The same. And what was the religion of the Romanov? Christian. Had the Romanov been in power in Russia, Hitler would not have invaded. This is all the Bolshevik revolution. It was all the Jews. Backed by Rothschild, it was all the Jews. What came out of it was a Jewish-Russian parliament. So Hitler would not have invaded Russia. There was no point. His enemies were the false Jews, the espousers of Judaism the sworn enemies of Jesus and Christianity. As a matter of fact, you can go back and read the Caiaphas, the high priest of the temple at the time of Jesus, who gave his account. And he's saying very plainly in defense of himself, this is a report after the crucifixion, why it was that Jesus was crucified. And he gave an analysis and he says, if, what this man, Jesus, is preaching is the truth compared to what they had from their God, which is Lucifer, by the way. 
he plainly saw that there was no salvation for the Jews. What has Yah been saying all along? There is none. They crucified the only salvation for them and the rest of the world. And so they're all back here today for judgment. So what have you got today in England? Satanists dominate via Freemasonry. It's all Jews. What is behind it? Fake Judaism, the enemy of Jesus. The USA, Obama, all of his administration, a dual Israeli. That, that is fake Judah. Obama is a skull and bonesman. His name is Undertaker. Why? Well, what about the... 5,000 FEMA concentration camps with guillotines all across the country. The Vatican has been dominated by fake Judaism and Freemason with homosexuality and child molestation for as far back as we can delve. As of this week, or, or, or of June the 30th or whatever it was, Cardinal Timothy Dolan, whom I sent all the information announcing the Christ return on the 8th of March, he was the head dude, the lead man, the spokesman for the media, he had it all. That's what Benedict said. You heard me read it the other day. And he didn't say anything to me? No, of course not. Okay, so Darwin has moved millions out of the uh, accounts of the, the church in the, the USA. This is all to do with, uh, what was it, Milwaukee? There's a, court, there's a, a, a class action suit by uh, multiple complainants there, plaintiffs there, who are bringing um, charges against 42 priests, archbishops, bishops, whatever you like, child molestation, sexual abuse like you wouldn't believe. And um, so what does Dolan do? He moves all the money out of the account so that they can't. Because the diocese went into Chapter 11. So on the rumour of it, Dolan moved all the money out of the archdiocese. So who in the midst of all these abominations central to the Vatican tried in vain to rid the church of its filth? He was stopped by John Paul II and then in his own administration. So what's Gain Swain up to? Hello, the personal secretary, that revelation of it all. You know, there's all these power broking and cliches within the Vatican and all the rest of it. And here you have the Pope, the gentle, innocent man that he is, however, filled with a fire to try to get rid of the filth out of the church who was making him sick and stopped at every quarter. Well, the one dude, it's reported, it's a part of the public record, the one dude that knows everything in the Vatican, who's who in the Dazoo, all the departments exactly, you know, who they are and is what, reportedly, what Francis is depending upon, is, is Gan Swain. So, Gan Swain could have stood up. He could have at any time stood up. presentation of the statue of Michael and said it right then. Absolutely. Accused him on the spot. Absolutely. What's he going to do in front of him? Yeah. And he is lucid by him. Absolutely. Said it before, I'll say it again. I told the Pope, Benedict, to hang in there. Yeah, so what, what, you know, we've got Benedict stopped by John Paul II, and then within his own administration, and then, um, so what happened? Benedict retires, and, and <laughs> the first time in history, or in 600 years or whatever, and then he did the absolutely unthinkable. What did he do? What did he do that was so, so dreadful? He declared publicly that Christ returned and he had met him and was communicating with him through the apostolic letter. So Benedict wrote his apostolic letter stating he believed Jesus had returned to be set upon by Francis who has been charged, this is all part of the public record, with child rape, 
kidnapping and charged with conspiring to kidnap two Jesuit priests, men who have disappeared, never heard of again, according to their families' testimonies. And he's done the same to the friend of Pope Benedict XVI, Father Giuseppe Ciavello. He, he, it was he, it was actually the first man in the entire Christian world to believe, bringing it all to the attention of Pope Benedict. Is he dead? No, they cannot kill him, just as they cannot kill Benedict or Sister Maria. So then we've got the emails from Francis investigators, you've all seen those before, reporting that Giuseppe was shot dead in Sicily. How can this all be so? Yet it is. We've been to the Rome police, the local police, three different police stations. And they all, yeah, the German embassy, we've been everywhere. Nobody can do anything, they said, especially the Rome police. There's no connection between any other department outside every little area or, or, or provincial area, and they're only very small. So the entire world is consumed by false Judaism. The Torah is as evil as the day is long, and it dominates. And that, that's what um, Caiaphas was saying. With their God, the one God who has given them this, that, and the other, and all the rest of it, the circumcision and, and all the rules and the laws. And, and so if Jesus be true, then their God is a liar. And that's what he has been saying all along. Their God is Lucifer. And now today, they freely admit it. Now, what have we got? Historically, you've got Pontius Pilate was evil. He killed Jesus. Yet when we read the letter he wrote to Rome, to the Senate, giving an account of the events of the crucifixion, I did that the other night, didn't I? It's that, yes. Okay, we'll upload that today too. He was a friend of Jesus and tried to protect him from the evils of the Pharisee, Sadducee, and Herodians that could not be trusted. Trusted, They were the enemies of Rome. And the Herodians were actually the Essenes. If Jesus was an Essene, he wasn't a Jew at all. Yeah. You had the Nazarene Essenes and the ones from the south, Qumran. Yeah, that's Carmel. Carmel. Mm. Right. Anyway. So, isn't it about time wise men and women step back and look at why Benedict's communication with the man he has declared is Christ has been cut off. And the witnesses in Father Giuseppe Ciavello and Sister Maria Della Rosa to the second coming, as announced by Benedict, have been kidnapped at best and murdered at worst. The pattern of the charges against Francis repeated. Benedict himself already knew he was a prisoner of the Vatican, as revealed in the video produced the night of the planned announcement by Benedict of the return of Salvatore Mundi, Jesus Christ Almighty, in the person of Brian Leonard Golightly Marshall, which was stopped by Francis, and that was revealed in the telephone conversation with RAI TV station that told Benedict what went down. Francis stopped it. Now, this is what is amusing is that on Friday, we've been through this, this these were the photographs at the beginning. Pope Benedict has been allowed out under the invitation of Francis for the dedication and photo opportunity of a project which Benedict began the statue of the Archangel Michael who is the heavenly image of Jesus at 33 years of age. Hello, the one that looks just like Yah's face there. <laughs> I looked at him and I said, Hun, that's you! <laughs> now, Michael, Archangel Michael, is the same number 
of the unusual chromosomes reported by the Galvin Institute in Australia to Yahweh, they found within his blood, it's all documented. Oh, we found three unusual chromosomes. They are number three, number four, and number 13. Well, three, four, one, three, is the number for Michael, the archangel, listed in the James Strong's Greek Concordance. Hello. So it's all rather ironic, isn't it? <laughs> now this is, this is my bit before I actually... Now the video released by the Rome Report says Francis approached Benedict and the natural body language of each of them adopts the hands on the shoulders once again as at their first meeting. The Rome Report says it's only been the second meeting between them, public meeting between them. Um, and then the translation of what Benedict says to Francis. Now they don't have a great long chat, you can see that. Because when you slow it down and watch, you see that Benedict's lips are not moving at all. At first he doesn't look at Francis so when he first takes him. Then he comes up, puts his hands up there in the net like <laughs> as they both go to embrace. And then um, Benedict is saying nothing. And, he, and then just a few, have a, have a good trip to Rio. Which is still at least 18 days away. So is he expecting to see him in the meantime before... No, otherwise you wouldn't be saying have a good trip to Rio. And by the way, I hope your plane goes down. Something like that. Now, they live next door to each other. So, yeah. Now, Francis is desperately trying to delude the Catholic world into thinking um, that they're, they're really close. That was the whole point of the, the upload that's already there. You know, his... Uh, merging with uh, the thought of Benedict and all the minor, uh, uh, you know, made up, well, you know, because they're as far apart as East is from the West, and never twain shall meet, so yada, yada, yada. Now, we had, um, we have a very in-tune disciple who doesn't know, she doesn't know biblical characters, she has no idea of who's who in the zoo, she knows exactly who Brian and myself are, because the day that we walked into her shop in Sydney, Australia, uh, she, no, sorry, not Sydney, uh, outside of Melbourne in Australia, she took a telephone call from a friend of hers and she said, I'm talking to Mr. and Mrs. God now. They've walked into the shop. And she's the one that uh, is amongst a group of very gifted friends, if you like, and one of them had been saying for, for weeks, I feel like, you know, why, why is God, inva why is Jesus invading my space? She kept sensing the presence of God really close, like he was just up the road. Well, we had moved into the area six weeks before and we were living just up the road. And the day we walked in, and of course I just started talking about what, what it is that I talk about, which is either <laughs> cure of AIDS, what we've done, been able to do in New Guinea that the world isn't reporting on, and and then um, the Christ returned in the pyramid. Well, as it turns out, this one was, uh, the pyramid had been so much a part of her psyche. She said, you're joking. She said, I have been thinking, wondering, questioning, digging deep on the pyramid. What, what is it all about? So that's the point when Yah walks in and she knew straight away who we were. And she, uh, she has reported to us several things that we know to be absolutely accurate and true, even before this little saga um, was presented to her, but she has no knowledge of, of uh, biblical characters or, or prophecy or anything like that, nothing. As a matter of fact, she goes out of her way not to be influenced by anything she reads or watches. She doesn't watch um, our YouTubes, anything like that. Uh, she just, when she's presented with something and asked what are her impressions, it's cute, it, as she says, it comes from a pure, uncontaminated heart and she can just freely speak what she picks up. So with that, um, I posted a photograph of, of uh, that one that Rome Report released and is loaded up to the Facebook page, uh, Francis speaking and, and Benedict sitting down listening to what it is that he's saying. And um, I'm not able to get the exact quote, but this is the essence of it. 
Uh, she says, the one sitting down is laughing inside as if, okay, now, now, now it's coming, something like that. And then the one standing is very worried about something, thinking this is a grave situation. Perhaps the very thing the one sitting is laughing about. Now, of course, the one sitting, Benedict, knows Jesus is in Rome at the door. And they're unveiling his statue. <laughs> oh, dear, oh, dear. And as you know, I had a comment about uh, there's no way that uh, the Archangel be Michael will be looking after after uh, Francis. As a matter of fact, it'll be he and Gabe coming to cart, cart him away. Woo. He doesn't like to sleep alone, apparently. That's what he said. Um, he likes little boys. Well, that's a thought. Whoa. <sighs> now, Frank, yeah, frightened of being alone, of the dark, something like that. Not of the dark, but of being alone. Doesn't like being alone. Now, as of this moment, of course, the Christ and I are in Rome, waiting until the world finally wakes up. Jesus is back, and indeed, he is the enemy of the Vatican, the way it is, and he will destroy it. Now, I'm going to stop here because uh, in another upload, I'll uh, read a book that Yah has put together. It's all um, marvellous, wondrous miracles that he's revealed for everybody. And, uh, yeah, so I'll stop here, let this one go up. It's three o'clock. Stop that. I'll press the little buttons now. This